I used to coach, I used to practice in the end with a weight vest, like forty pound weight vest. Go through the whole practice. Everything. <laughs> hey man. Just, yeah, whole, whole hey, dog. How much weight? I mean, I'm gonna listen, I'ma just tell y'all as a guy that played in the league, man. <laughs> If somebody was playing with a weight vest, first off, off. Yeah. How'd I was you do? Off. I was getting off. How'd you do? Like, I, I know you shot job, it bad. Yeah. I know you yeah. shot it bad. I play, no, I play well. You shot it off. I play well. You tell me you shot it bad. Yeah, I, I mean, Carlisle was up in the building. My friends. <laughs> was in there. My, they, friends. They, <laughs> my friends. My, my friends was playing. <laughs> I, I did well. I did well in the weight vest. Very well in the weight vest. Welcome to season two of Iman Amongst Men show that takes an honest look at what it is to be a man in today's world. We don't shy away from topics most people are too afraid to talk about. We're going to take it all the way there. It's season two, y'all. Skip. Welcome to Iman Amongst Men, presented by Uninterrupted. I am your host, Iman Shumper, here with my big brother, Ari. Ari, go and give a what's up to the people. What's going on, people? I'm Ari, and today we are joined by another NBA special guest. 2010 champion. He's mm. gone by many different names and monikers. But mm. Give it up for Meta Sandiford Artest. Hey. Man. <laughs> I was about to say World Peace. Oh, hey. Bro. That's, oh, bro. That's it. Thanks, man. That, that's my stage name. World Peace is yeah. now my stage name, but Sandiford is my real name. Copy. Because I changed it when I got married. Right, right, Copy. right. So, right. but yeah, I'd rather World Peace. But thank you. You got that right. And Sandiford is your wife's name. Yeah, yeah right? my wife's her last Sally, name. So Sally, she's Sandiford. Brought y'all together. Yeah, he brought it together. Like the, like the kids. He said what? Kids got to do that. Like when it, like oh, you know, like the oh, hyphen. When you bring yeah, yeah, yeah when you hyphenate a kid, usually the kid has the hyphenated name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's raw that you did that. Though. Yeah. I don't think a lot of men. Was it was it your inspiration? The name change? Um, no, nah, it was really her. Oh yeah. I wanted I wanted world peace, but not everybody wanted to be at the airport. Hey, Miss World Peace, your flight is you're late for your uh, flight. That's like kind of like embarrassing, right? Mm, imagine is that. It? I mean, just imagine, hey, uh, they'd be like, Meta World Peace, your flight is leaving in five feel, did minutes. Did you ever feel like that? I don't like when they talk so loud, right? It's like, Why? it's like, send me a text message or something, <laughs> you know? Because you don't want everybody to know. Oh, like, oh you just yeah. don't want everybody to know it's you. It's only yeah. one World Peace. Copy, 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 yeah. copy, you know I mean? copy. <laughs> but you do, like, you do like to hear it, though. I do like the name, yeah, for sure, for yeah, sure. Like, I mean, it was a reason why I did it, you know. I, I, but I'm saying, like, you, I don't know if it changed any, but you remember when I first asked you way back in the day, you was telling me like it's dope to people have to say that. Yeah, like, you have to say it, and there's something beautiful in what you said when you told me that. So I'm like, why wouldn't you want to hear it on the oh, air for a yeah. speaker? That's why I was like, I, I thought you that was the thing, but I, I probably it probably do get annoying after a while. Just after bring, a while, bringing yeah. more attention to yourself. Yeah, for sure. Especially I'm traveling by myself a lot. I'm traveling a mm. lot, so I'm always by myself. If you, as long as you Delta, man, go Delta. Uh, <laughs> you know they got the uh, the little service. Boy, oh Delta. yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Man, they pull you right up to the plane. Boy, I heard about care. that. Yeah, they take care of you, man. Yeah, right around the, the plane. Yeah, you gotta get that. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta connect. Know, man. The theme of today's show is gonna be the evolution of a man. Uh, when you hear that phrase, what comes to mind? Um, when I hear that phrase in comparison under the context, it's, it's not even a change, it's more finding your inner self. Mm. So, and that is the evolution, right? It's you, you're born, you experience, mm -hmm. then you or take on, you, you, your personality develops, you go through something, and then you get back to who you was at some point in time. Right. Right. So I think right. that's what evolution kind of means to me. What? It just keep going back? That full circle. That full, full circle, circle moment. Because some people will say change, and I don't really believe in change because I don't want people, especially like in our neighborhoods, to say, oh, you got to change. Now, you don't got to change because when you came out the mom's womb, you were perfect. Okay. Right. And then trauma, different things happen mm -hmm. in our communities where then people would say, oh, this guy changed. No, he, he didn't change. The trauma that he wants or she experienced, they are able to get through it now. No always, need to change. I always felt like money, like people be like, oh, he changed when he got money. It's like, no, nah, that money showed you who he was. For yeah. sure. Showed yeah. you exactly who he was. For sure. Because that's what you're going to, at, at the core, like, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes you you lose sight of yourself in money. You've seen that version too. Um, but most times, like people sort of decipher, like you start realizing, like you get money, you start realizing like, oh, I'm a loner, or I, I'm, I like this, or I like that, because you'll, you'll start spending, you'll start sure. doing it a lot excessively, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So 
I get no, what I don't you know what you're saying. <laughs> 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 but you, you like when you when you express um, that it's kind of finding your way back, and that is your evolution. That's that's I've never thought of it that way. But as you were saying it, that shit sort of painted itself. Like right, is that like something that you did with like you, you thought that through with somebody or you just cooked that up on the floor? Well, you right know, now? I mean, you're an artist, for sure. So you can freestyle. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you I'm just like, cooked that up right now for the give you more I points just for that. It, I cooked that up just. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you your props for that, my man. One time, for Queens Bridge. <laughs> Shout out, <Tara. laughs> Look, that's crazy. Um, when you uh growing up in Queens, we want to mm. touch on the the '80s and '90s. Growing up in that era, uh, basketball, hip hop. Um, everything going on, like touch on it and speak about how it shaped you. Yeah, definitely, man. Growing up, you know, in the largest federal housing project in America, mm. and it's so big, you can get lost. It's actually, it was actually really beautiful. Like, you'll wake up in the morning, 1993, Nas is popping, Mob Deep popping, mm. CNN, for everybody, like so many stars, MC Shane. Like, so growing up as a kid, a lot of the violence and the dysfunction. When you go outside, you forget about that. Cause it was big community back in the days. Yeah. Go to this block, go to that block. Even though your family might have drama somewhere, different yeah. things like that. But when you're a child, you just going from each block playing tag, freeze tag, all this stuff. And it was, now it's not like that as much yeah. because so many things has happened. Then the laws changed. You know, then police started to come in and started to dictate, you know, how we gonna run our own communities. Then it got boring. People, kids not playing basketball as much. They're not in the park. They're not playing tag. They're not playing jump rope. They're not playing skelly. They're not playing. That. They're not I playing hopscotch. What do What do you think that is? Like, what do you think the reason for that is? I think it's a lot of different things. One, um, you know, I think when you're policing a community, mm -hmm. you got to have a different approach rather than going in there thinking, "Oh, you're a criminal. How about, hey, how you doing today? Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, how was school today? Oh, you, oh, did you pass, right? Versus yeah. saying, hey, what, what, what you got? What drugs you got in your pocket? You know Straight what I mean? You're already looking at, so I think a little bit of that and then the laws say, okay, now we're gonna be able to go into these communities and we can arrest anybody we want, mm -hmm. right? Or, you know, these people are bad people. Right. Or, or LeBron, it's unfortunate because I, I played for Coach Phil, but, you know, Coach Phil say something like, oh, this guy's bringing in his posse, right? And it's, it's different things like that that sets the narrative on how the laws are gonna treat us. Right. You know, so from that perspective- They encourage you know, I think the kids I'm, to stay inside and stay away from that. Yeah. You, it's not really them. an encouragement. Like what he just said, it's, it's almost like it's a necessary evil at that point, cause it's like you got police in there who are doing shit and you don't really know who's who anymore. Just cause you know, everybody's not out. Everybody's not doing nothing. Like communities aren't really looking after each other anymore, anymore cause you got a lot of parents that are not even there. Right. Right, right. You know, just seeing that whole evolution was just like, and I'm always kind of, you know, I evolved. When I first got into the league, I was more a rebel. Mm -hmm. You know, like my first thing I said at rookie transition camp, I was sitting here, Elton Brand sitting here, Baron, Baron was over here. And then Mr. R.I.P. David Stern was just like, okay, we're doing this stuff, NBA cares. And I, and I said, hey, what are we doing for the hood? That was my first comment in, coming into the league, like, what are we doing for the hood? And then Elton Brand tapped me on the leg, what are you talking about? I'm saying, oh, well, I want to know what we're doing for the hood. Right. You know, and you know, from that perspective, then when I got on the court, I wanted to always let people know that I'm still from the streets, right? So I was actually, I wasn't portraying, but I was um, kind of exposing or even showing, showing light to somebody from the hood, hey, I, I, still, I, I still feel you. Mm -hmm. And it was, I didn't do it the right way, whereas now I'm doing it more educational, trying to give back, you know, uh, more, um, social impact things going on. But back then, that's how you knew how to do it. That's how you knew how to do it. Like, cause you felt your pain. You felt like you still feel for your people back home. Straight you up. you made it, but your friends didn't make mm -hmm. it. You know, so for me, that was always like hard to deal with. It's crazy. I remember uh, my friends like being like, hell no, you better not. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody really, my what? brothers like just, just correcting my behavior, like, mm. oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people being like, hell no, like no, we don't do that, no, hell no, bro, no, just, you go to that, but go by that by yourself, Joe. Don't even right, right. feel me, like right, don't right. even don't even have us, no, y'all just go to that or just y'all to go like make it look clean, like, 
to yeah. where it don't look like you come with all that because you know, like you said, you get that stigma on you and then it just stick with you. Right? Yeah. Everywhere you go, that's that's all they think about now. It's like no matter what I do, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I definitely get what you're saying and like being like uh, uh, coming into the league, like you don't really have anybody that knows how to do it right, especially right. if they not from there. Like if I if I come in and I'm from Queensbridge and then you're coaching there and you from Queensbridge, now I got somebody that could mm, right. that I feel like yeah that could feel me. But it's like if if you don't have that, you just feel like. Like they not hearing me. They like, not hearing me. They just they just threw it to the side. Like it's, right. it's a natural feeling. That it seemed like that was the mo for your whole career. Like people just not understanding you, and more so not wanting to understand. Like why? I ain't gonna lie. At one point, you when you was com combative. I'm like shit. He gonna come out here and get thirty, man. Do whatever you want to do. You want to you get into it with these people. Get into it with these people. They don't want to play again. Now they scared to dribble. Oh, keep getting into it with these people. I don't care. Like that's how we felt watching yeah. it in Chicago. We like I don't give a fuck. Y'all scared of the man. Like he on our team. Oh, no, we I, love yeah, yeah, we like, I love watching. I love watching. I love watching. I miss being in Chicago, man. I was, when I got traded from Chicago, that hurt. Cause I wasn't supposed to get traded. Right, they came right. to my room. I was in the hotel. I was, in, I forget where it was Miami actually. I was getting in a lot of trouble in Chicago, <laughs> so <laughs> they come to me and, and Bill Cartwright was like, "Yo," he said, "Hey, hey, hey Ron, we want to keep you here. You know, we gonna take care of you. Like they already committed to me." And they were like, please stop mess messing up, making mistakes. <laughs> please stop. <laughs> like a last chance. Yeah, like a last chance. And I made another mistake, and then I was I was in Miami, and they told me, "Look, don't leave the bus. You got traded." That's how I got traded to uh, Indiana. Yeah, and how did you feel? Like, were you just like, fuck yeah. it, like, it's on to the next, or were you Nah, like, I was hurt, yo. Yeah. I was hurt, man. I was like, um, when that happened, I was like, because I was self-destructing at that time, and I was self-destructing for a large part of my career in the NBA, so I was self-destructing, and I knew, I'm like, you just, you, you just throwing it away. You know what I'm saying? Here you are, about to be an all-star. I, I still had a great mm -hmm. career, but here you are, I could have been in Chicago, you know, Taking 20 team. shots for my yeah. team, for, yeah. you know what I mean? yeah. for many years, versus going from team to team. Right. You know, that's how I always tell players, don't request trades. I always tell players, like, don't request yeah. a trade. Nah, I never request a trade, because you're playing with your money. Well, if the yeah. teams need yeah. somebody they can trust, they'll give it to you. You know, so if, you, if you're requesting trades and doing things like that, you could be, you know, it's 30 teams. Mm -hmm. You gotta have 30 number one players, right? Yeah. So you could be number 31. You don't. You wanna be number 29. You wanna be in that 130 so you get that max. Right. Then you got the next 30, that's, <laughs> that's the next max. You don't wanna be like on right. the edge, you know? So I always tell players to try not to request trades if you don't really need to, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's solid. Yeah, I ain't never. Request it, yeah. Mm. Well, you, they I had mean, put, you they never had experienced in, unhappiness they had like put, that. They had put in the media that I requested a trade once, Melo ended up shutting it down for us. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, mm. <laughs> like yeah. bro, I didn't re like request a trade. I, no, matter of fact, what, Melo, that was when we was with, uh, was it with Cleveland? I think it was with Cleveland. They put out some oh, weird no. show. Like, request a trade. trade. Like, y'all. I mean, sometimes you have to. Like, if you have to, you yeah. have to, right? If you yeah, have to. I you wasn't have to. in no driving seat to be out here <laughs> being like, yeah, I'm requesting, I'm demanding a trade. Like, come on, dog. Y'all got me playing 3 and D. Y'all gonna put that in the media. Car. Man, y'all don't chill out. Stop That's playing what they do. with me. That's what yeah, was yeah. your favorite thing about playing in Chicago? I know you yeah, said you man. messed up a couple. Or of favorite times. thing about the that. city, period. Yeah, come on, you know we Chicago kids. I, love I wanna Chicago, hear some good man. shit about Chicago. I used to be on seventy nine for Halstead a lot at the <laughs> little bar. <laughs> I, used to, I love saying now for Halstead. I didn't expect that to be yeah. the first. Right, uh, <laughs> Harold's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he knows. Rock and roll that, McDonald's. I was nineteen yeah. years old in nineteen ninety nine, man. Man, that's crazy. I was man. having a great time in Chicago. Art bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when that, that was open, right, yeah. um, and I built a lot of rela good relationships. I actually did, I did some stuff in the Robert Taylor community. Mm. I did some stuff in there. Um, that's the first thing I did. I yeah. went to the went to the hoods, uh, Cabrini Green a couple times with some people that I know over there. Just wanted to, I, I felt Shit. I wasn't home. Yeah. And I just needed like I did the same thing when I went to like, New York. I was just want to say yeah. that's exactly how we felt. In we New was York. in New York. We was in everybody hood, just touching them, touching the yeah, people, letting them the see people. you for a second, like. Sometimes it'll be like, I'll be ducked off, but then a couple of kids will see me, and it's like, you could get out of there, but it's like, man, fuck it, they don't get to see us, yeah, we outside, much, yeah. let's do it. Like, 
they they finna tweak this crazy that they even know who what's going on. Like yeah. they young, they over here at the park, and now they just turned up. And that was my favorite team growing up. The Bulls. Yeah, that's Boy. the Bulls. Oh, shit, is, the Bulls is my favorite team. Yeah. Right. The Knicks. I'm from New York, so mm-hmm. it's right, conflict. Right, right. So I love the Knicks. No, for sure. For sure. But the Bulls is like my number one team. And then. So what was it like for you watching the Bulls Knicks in the night? Yeah. So when they played, I was rooting for MJ, but rooting for the Knicks. When the Knicks played the Bulls, you know what I'm saying? I root for MJ, That's but tough. But room, room, hopefully the Knicks. Yeah, will win. I don't know how y'all can do that <laughs> as fans. Like I don't know how they do it. Like yeah. that's why I told you I don't. I blame LeBron for it, but like team, uh, players jumping from team to team now, it's really hard to get a hold of a player knowing he's gonna be here and really become oh, a fan. Oh yeah, I told you, bro. You know, I got killed for the quote, man. I'm yeah. the one that said it. Like, yeah, bro. Oh you, yeah, you I, mean, I did see that. You yeah. started this barbecue yeah, did. business. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely started it. Yeah, I, I, you said that on this show, actually. Mm. No, I, it, was, it was on was this show? show? Mm, I believe you did say it on I think you did say it on this show. It was on another show, too. You like said in, it multiple times. I don't remember. Well, maybe it was all the smoke. It was v Vlad. Vlad. Oh, okay, yeah, Vlad made it go. Shout out to Vlad, he made it go, <laughs> go nutty. Yeah, that's what it is, man. Now it's 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 honestly weird to see a player like go. I would do it, honestly. You know, most their career, one team. Like Stay well, on one LeBron team? is not, but well, LeBron is. Hop well, from team to oh, team. Oh, go team to team? The key is, the whole thing you want, you want rings. That's the thing you want, right? So the teams are gonna trade you anyway. You never know when you're gonna get traded. Bron, right? yeah, like we can stop doing that with Bron. Nobody's trading Bron. That's yeah. That's like, how we got to stop. That's the only reason why I say that. Like we got to stop. But LeBron mm-hmm. had to go to Cleveland because people wasn't going to Cleveland. Whether At people first... are going to Cleveland or not, do not say they're going to trade you anyway when it's Bron. Like, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Right, like, not Bron. Right, right, not Bron. Nah, wasn't going to trade Mike. Mike, you're not getting traded, bro. That's you know, how. That's how man, I feel. Like, like you're I don't not know how traded. I would feel like Steph, Mike. You're not getting traded, that, bro. Good luck. You're not getting traded, bro. But then you gotta depend on your general manager making good decisions. You gotta depend on your coach That's true. vibing with the players. If that don't work for four years, and you like Damian oh, no, Lillard. I'm no longer mad at it. I just said he started, I just said he started the barbecue business, man. I ain't mad at them for doing it no more, because yeah. I get it. Like I've been on both business sides of it, where it's like, playing a role and yeah, then right. doing everything they ask, sacrificing and all this, and then at the end of the year they like, but you ain't got no numbers. And I'm right, like, right, 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 exactly. Like, bro, I just sacrificed That's for a year, saying, like, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? So ain't I ain't no get, recognition in that. I totally get the That's business it. side of where it's like, they ain't gonna care about us. I'm just like, let's, we can't make the excuse like, man, they gonna trade you, bro, like. Right, 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 right. I mean, you played, you played, <laughs> you played through injury, right? And then they act like you didn't play through injury. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I be feeling like you're supposed to do that anyway, though. I play just, through injury. It's just like you, you have wanna, to play through injury. Like, do you want to hoop or no? Yeah, no, you but it's, di- it's different now. But it messed up your why. contract, though. Yeah, now it's completely different, and I get it. Like that's an, that's what's fucked up. Do you have? I get it. Do you ever? Is there ever a time that you played with an injury that you like? Ah, I shouldn't have done that. For sure, <laughs> made it worse. <laughs> so I, I got a bunch of them. So I had this. Um, I had yeah. three sur- I had surgery on this pinky. I mean, on this thumb in Indiana. And I came back in seven days. I was supposed to be out six weeks. <laughs> so I come back in seven days and I'm playing with one hand for like two months, right? I'm basically playing one hand for two months. Then I had, so I had only surgery. I wasn't able, this one in Chicago, I had three surgeries on this one. Uh-huh. Came back, couldn't even bend, but I'm playing with tape all over it. I should have took the full time off, right? So your stats can stay high. Mm-hmm. My, st- my, my, my field Fucked goal percentage is going down. Yeah. I'm shooting left with one hand. This hand, I got to play my left hand. This time I got to play my right hand. You know, and then like this meniscus, uh, I had a meniscus surgery, came back in five days. That's what ended my career. I should have never came. I should have took the whole six weeks. But you can come back. When you get a meniscus surgery, the doctor says, hey, walk right away. Once you get it. Yeah, for sure. They say, put you right. So when I, when I found that out, I did some research online. <laughs> <laughs> so I did some research online. This hell before yeah. they do the surgery. Yeah. Like, yo, right. we got to, you know what I'm saying? I just did some research. We just Googled it up. Yeah. Like, right now we good. Like, come on. And I showed it to the LA trainer, the, the Laker trainer. <laughs> he did serious. Yeah, serious. And I said, I could play. Now, look at this. I can play. <laughs> And they said, okay, and I played, but that put me out two years. That put me out, when I went to the Knicks, I was, that's, I was over. My they career said, was over at the Knicks. They said, okay. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't that they said, okay. It was that I said, I'm ready to play and I can legally play because look what it says on the, on the paper. It was like, you can play on, you can walk on a, on, on a tear, meniscus. But you, you, you got to choose if you want to play or not. I chose to play. It wasn't like they forced me to play. No, no, they didn't force you to play, but they, they 
diabetically should have told you absolutely not. They did say absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> they they left that part out. Not. Yeah. They, they told absolutely them beforehand. Bro, when I was with the here. Knicks, man, I remember one game I was fit to play <laughs> and Roger and them did not even put my uniform in there. Well, no, I can I can I didn't even have a uniform, shoes, nothing. I played I played through like, everything. Boy, you not playing tonight, dog. We we don't care about but your that's when, but that's that when was never start, allowed with but me. But that's when people started doing that, like play extended rest and all that, like sitting people out. Like it was that's around crazy. that time. I thought man, bro, I did a couple of quick cleanups on the meniscus. Why what was the fuck you was on? Yeah, man. Why would you, how did you do that? Well, what happened was like. You didn't feel them like. No, I was, where you I was, was like, done. I, even I played, so I got back. And um, I heard it against the Warriors, yeah. came back, played in the playoffs against the Spurs because it was Nash, Howard. Mm -hmm. It was the last time I was going, I don't know when I'm gonna play with these guys again. Copy. So I wanted to play. I knew we wasn't gonna beat the Spurs, but in my mind, I don't never think we gonna lose. Right, right. So I was on one leg, right, for the most part. Then I had to keep getting drained. When I got the Knicks, I, I was getting drained every week. I was getting drained. My career was over, but I would, that's why I would tell people don't don't play through injury, yo. Take care of your stuff if you. It's crazy. Take yeah. care of your injuries. I yo. felt like I played through a couple of times where my knee was messed up, where I could have just waited, but mm -hmm. I was too thirsty. I love basketball too much. I need people like that. It sucks because yeah, it's like the gift and the curse. It's like you're supposed to love it like that and be excessive, but it's like, bro, I was like, especially like coming back from my ACL tear, yeah. like I was thirsty. Like I wanted to play all day. You remember I used to be you trying to play you wanna, yeah, wanna yeah, play you, you at the <laughs> at the wild. They like, bro, sit your ass down, man. Calm down, dog. But yeah, you, Tim, my we was always in the yeah, gym. I yeah. was in the gym with y'all too. He was down. Then you started helping us with that post shit. He like, bro, you don't even got to do all that. He started telling Woody. He like, man, let this man go to the post. They looking like, man, we got Carmelo Anthony and Amari Stoudemire. We don't care about none of that. No, man, <laughs> we no, don't care no, about no, what you no, talking. No, I'm gym. like, boy, let me get it done. That like, was oh, a, we had a so great man. team that year, man. I wish I, I wish I was healthy. And I wish I was a little younger. That was a really good team. Real talk. That was Real a good talk. team. We had a lot of good teams come through there. That little New York yeah, game, yeah, that, yeah, that time. Yeah. We had some some good players come in and out of that and got yeah. in that loop. Uh, what are your best and worst memories yeah. when you look back on your career? The worst, the, the brawl is starting is the worst. Honestly, I was right, I finished sixth in MVP the year before that. Come back, averaging eight points more, still the best defender. Just came off a defensive player of the year. That was, that was, a, that was a bummer. That one was just like, that hurts. Mm. Because the legacy, even though I still got all-stars and the awards, one that won a chip, yeah, you know, but. Gotta throw that out, no, you can't take that shit away. That, that, <laughs> that, this was raw about the chip. Once your name next to a chip, it ain't really no, what you gonna put up there? It ain't nothing, it yeah. still don't erase it. Like, yeah. you did it, okay. like we still got the, the video footage of you hitting the shit, like it's already there. Like, you get what I'm saying? So it, you can't say that, don't, don't feel like it yeah. blemish your championship. It may not do well on the the name and the career and shit, yeah. but it's like with that championship, y'all won that month. Yeah, it kind of put a couple pieces together. Yeah. It did put a couple, I, I was really happy when I won. I, was, I didn't know if I was gonna win. Cause you need the team, players gotta wanna play with you. Yeah, yeah we That's was happy piece. for you. Like I was so happy that you were able to get one yeah. just because of the career you had. And it was like, like how we talking full circle, like it was kind of like symbolic for you to come back and like achieve something like that and yeah. still, you know, be able to walk away from the game knowing you did something positive or knowing that you left a decent mark after, yeah. you know, the career that you had. It was, that's impressive. Right. My best moment probably was, uh, I got to think the defensive player of the year. Yeah. The championship yeah. was good, but the defensive player of the year was like, you know, I was a small forward, one of the youngest. I think Michael was the youngest and the last wing to win it, or GP. I was one of the youngest to win the award. So it was like a lot of things that was like heading in the right direction. So that's something that stands out, you know, uh, even a little bit, a little bit more than the championship. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. But the game seven was probably bigger than the defense. I always way wanted. One. I, I did one. I Woody wanted. I wanted to win that shit, but I couldn't after I tore my shit. I oh, thought yeah, I told him. Oh I yeah, should, you was yeah. you was for sure. But when I first got that, when yeah. I first got there, I was like, I wanted that bit bad. When they started talking about, it, I was like, I get that. I was third in steals and shit. Yeah, and you then was I blew my up. shit. And I was like, man, we gotta do all this rehab and all that. I'll never forget trying to get back in the mix of that and being like, damn, niggas, 
really got faster when I got to come back mm-hmm. to get back to zero. Like, <laughs> they got fast. I'm like, bro, strong as hell now. He wasn't even that strong last year. Like, yeah. I started getting mad about that. But it's the like, shit, I always wonder that about trophy that. trophy cold. The shit <laughs> like that, like, fuck with you mentally. Like, what? when you get hurt for an extended period of time and then you come back and you do see improvement outside of you oh, being yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Like, you, you start oh, seeing yeah. the development. Like, yeah, you'll see a motherfucker, like, that didn't have it yet. Or right. They, 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 you was way stronger than this person, or you always could get by this person with this, or do this, and then you come back and realize, damn, I gotta get back to my top speed. Like, I'm not even at top speed. Yeah. And they mid-season, they breath together, they they strength together, like, it's a nightmare trying to play catch up with an NBA player. Like, for that sure. been through training camp, like, you miss training camp, phew, tough season for you. Yeah. <laughs> Real talk. Real That's talk. one of the reasons why I didn't like sitting out. Yeah, I, you know, I you I didn't want to that. lose my spot either. I had Al yeah, Harrison coming behind me, Steve Jackson coming behind me, Jonathan Bender. Yeah, I had I these guys that, that was I, I I was coming and starting. Mm-hmm. So I, everybody get hurt. Nobody was taking days off. I seen people with the worst injuries. Like, no, I'm playing tonight. Word. Word. What's the worst injury you seen somebody play with? Well, well, Jonathan had his knees was kind of messed up. He retired early too. But he, he, that should have been his spot, actually. He should have been starting that small forward. Right. He was cold, but he was, yeah, his I knees. I Jonathan Bender. John, I, I was in that spot because he was hurt. <laughs> straight up. Straight yeah. up. Like he, he yeah. Straight up. Yeah. They he couldn't was, see him. He was cold. The knees just went out, it was like They a, couldn't see him. No, it was fucked up. It, he's another one. He's like uh, Penny Hardaway, where it was like, man, if technology or if we had yeah, the medical right. know-how that we do now back then for them. They would've been able to bounce back. been different. I don't yeah. think I'm starting in Indiana Pacers at the small forward. You'd have to play two guard. And some we're gonna have to change. If Jonathan was healthy. <laughs> man, yeah. it was like that. Like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like Durant, Look, hey, you don't even do that for niggas. Like nah, he, nah, he really won't give nobody. Wanted, That's why I'm looking he like that. He one, he's one of those ones I that. Remember him. It's not that I don't give it up to a lot of people. It's just that. No, we I'm, make it. My it's mindset tough. is just like I'm gonna try to lock up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real though. But it's like yeah, I don't get it. I don't give a lot of people. Like, I ain't just gonna be like, oh yeah, he yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm like he in the league. Like everybody okay. will tell you too. Like Al Harrington, Jamal, and the the coaches that Jonathan Bender was like Durant. Mm. Yeah, better better shot blocker like Durant. Everything. Yeah, jump he was all more that. of a big man. More of a big man than Durant. Damn. But yeah, he could. I remember he could. Who, what college did he go to? He went, I think it was school. He went. He got out of high school. Oh yeah. Yeah, John came out of high school. See, that's why he's I cold. Yeah. All right, take me to Game Seven. <laughs> <laughs> game Seven, twenty ten. You hit the shot right. Immediately after y'all won, you thanked your therapist. <laughs> the show. Why? One of the reasons I did it, you know, I've been doing the mental health stuff for a long time. 2007, we started kind of, um, after I went through all my little anger management classes, all that stuff, I was doing a bunch of different therapy. Then I kept doing it because I, I felt good about it. And then the therapist I had out of Houston, she was teaching me how to breathe. And then I got into yoga, I got into meditation, got into chakras, all that stuff. And then it started to affect my game positively, you know? Then I started to make shots. I was making shots, I was just free. Actually, in, the, in Houston, I was probably at my best. I was averaging like 25 in the playoffs against the Lakers, and knocked out the, I guess Brandon Warrior was pretty good at that time yeah. too. We knocked them out. You know, so I was like, I was in my prime. So then next year I get traded to the Lakers. Um, kind of started out rocky, you know, cause I was a different role, Kobe mm-hmm. Powell. Mm-hmm. So I went from averaging 20 plus, you know, to Nothing, right? Lucky if you get a shot. Real right? talk. Right? So I had to, so I wanted to leave. I actually asked Coach uh, Mitch. <laughs> I was like, hey, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive. Right? So I was like, is there any, I asked my agent actually to ask. But they was like, no, nah, we want to keep you. We don't want to trade you. And they wasn't going to trade me. Once I found out they wasn't going to trade me, kind of so, locked all right, in. cool. I just got to lock in, got through it, a lot of therapy, sports therapy. And then, um, and then the playoffs, so every, I got suspended five times in the playoffs. I talked about this a couple times. First time I was in um, Indiana, mm-hmm. second time Sacramento, then in, um, again in a couple other places. So at this point in time, it's game seven, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, I wasn't, feeling, I wasn't feeling the greatest at this time. Me and Paul got a history, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My guy Paul, so, I'm, I didn't, and, and so I was like, you know what? I wanted, I called my therapist the night before. I was like, I need you to come to LA right now. She's from Houston, so she come to LA. We got to shoot around, I get home about 10 45 or 11 we have a little session you know just kind of re, re retooling you know kind of your, your your brain box mm-hmm. 
we did that, and then I was able to focus through that game, no controversy. Even when we got in a little tussle, no controversy. And then we won, and she was the first thing that came to my mind. First thing that came to my mind, you know. And I, I should have thanked, you know, the higher power also. So I, now, nowadays, no, I'm giving a shout out to the higher power. Yeah, you know, I'm it's dope. Mother. Like to be in that because you know that feeling when you get yeah. off the court. It's like, like right after something like that. I think when I first did it, like I, my first thing, I just felt weak. Like I think, I think we all just sort of bent down for a second because it's like I could be tired finally. Like you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's that feeling where like. But I'm like, they ain't stick no camera and no mic in front of my face. You see what I'm saying? I ain't have to answer no questions, so I don't know what the fuck I would have seen. You see what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I know that moment and how much, yeah, I'm like, bro, I, I never got to ask, like, why did you? Like, yeah, and I also, and then in 2007, I was trying to do a YouTube uh, mental health panel because I was trying to see how can you get mental health in communities where people can't pay for it. So I figured if I do like some type of video, you know, people could watch the video Happy. and it could be like a session where you don't have to pay for it because you know it's expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't got the money to pay for mental health therapy and stuff like that. So, so then that night, I mean, so when we won, I also wanted to just continue to push out that message also like, oh, it's, it's okay if you need therapy. Yeah. But then it just exploded. It's still like to this day. That quote. People still like therapists request panels, mental health panels, it's like overwhelming. <laughs> Still That's to dope. this day, 13 years later. That's dope. But it's good, right? It's like, you know, uh, hopefully I, I was able to make a change, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, I, I'm sure I would have to right, believe, man. yeah, you one of the first people to ever do that on, one, on that stage, but two, like somebody that we all look up to. Like if you look at and model your game and say, yo, that man play like me or they play in a league that I want to get to, like, when a, a kid that's going through it that, you know, nigga walk around tough with it, like, yeah, I'm going through it, but shut the fuck up talking to me. You right, know what right, I'm right. Like, right. he walk around with that. So it's like, it's good when he sees somebody that's kind of like him that had his same path and they say something like that. I just want to shout out my therapist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you stopped everything. Like, it's like, boy, your ass just won the chair. <laughs> like, we want to hear about this shot. Like, Shreddy said, I just want to shout out my therapist. And then you, I think after that, what you said, uh, Kobe passed me the ball. Oh, that like, was on the panel, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, like, oh, okay, yeah, like, and I'm, I'm. I did shout out my hood, too. That's, you always gonna do that. <laughs> I did shout out my hood, I was like. Queens, always. I shout out my hood, then I shout out my therapist, or maybe vice versa. It's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy. But I'm like, I'm like, if it, if it must have meant that much, and you feeling like that session, do you feel like, I wish I would've had a session before every game? Man, um. Did you ever feel like yeah, that? Do you maybe, feel like maybe, that should maybe. be pushed in the NBA? Sessions. We talk about mental health a lot yeah. on our show. Just like we're finding yeah. out that more and more uh, men, because you know we always bring men to come on as guests, but uh, we're finding out that more and more men are open to trying to do that or not doing therapy in a professional sense, but trying to get around other guys and keep it positive and actually talk about stuff instead of holding stuff in all the time. So I'm like. As I'm hearing hearing you talk about it, like even with you with that stuff uh, that you say with the panels and stuff, how how would one get a part of that if you want to talk about that? How do you? That's real. I'm, I've never been to nothing like that, but I shit, I ain't got shit to do. I come sit in that shit one time. Yeah, man, just, people just asking. We got like a rolodex of people that would want somebody to speak on the panel now because yeah. it's been years. But we've been trying to do this for years, right? And I, that's why even when I won a championship, I raffled off the ring. Mm -hmm. We raised about 600,000, 607,000, gave all the money away to like mental health institutions. You know, and it's just like trying to keep that message going. And I was trying to get corporate to say, oh wow, you know, medicine or Ron at the time is doing this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we need millions of dollars, right, to create impact. Right. Well, every year, millions of dollars, we need. Yeah, and, but since that wasn't happening, you know, it was, uh, it was kind of discouraging, you know, and so you just keep going out there and learning how to get grants, learning how to work with the right people, learning how to work with people that want to give back to social impact, there's a lot of people out there. So now that I'm in that little circle, mm -hmm. I'm able to, you know, uh, start to pursue that a little bit more. And I'm sure you got a team to help you with all that, the grants and all that shit. Yeah, that yeah, shit, yeah. The way that shit go, when you gotta start getting all them grants and then you <laughs> gotta get uh, licenses for this and all that, boy, that's oh, a Oh, you gotta get rabbit. licenses for that? Well, I mean, if you just, it depends like if you're trying to raise money for a good cause. Okay. You know, you, you can go to a corporation or you can try to ask the federal government you know, to support you on this cause. But a lot of people don't know exactly what you just said. There's so many athletes that want to give back, but like how do I get involved? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, like how do you get in the mix? Like, 
it's crazy. Like you hear all these conversations and you hear about stuff. Like I, I, I know plenty of times that I've done something and it'd be like the the NBA will like partner with uh, somebody and we, we really don't know who the charity is. Right, right, like, right, 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 right. Like it's there, it's like we do the, ch- I'm not saying it's like it was fake, right, right. but like, for what he was saying, like, what are we doing for, for our neighborhood? <laughs> yeah, for we do our for neighborhoods that so we can just so that we can see it. it. Yeah, yeah. So like when I it. ride past my mama house, what court is there that the NBA did? Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, how do we get the NBA where the NBA you guys want us come to feel the yeah, impact? Yeah, just to feel like they see, like we're like they're visible, like or just in co- a corporation. Yeah, or a or corporation that paired with. Yeah, somebody looked and said, "We see y'all." Mm-hmm. Like, where is that at? I, and I get what you're saying. Like, you get lost in that because you, I done did so many. You know how many NBA cares events? Like, yeah. I used to go to all that stuff. I have a good time with kids, so I don't mind. Once you give me a hundred kids, I'm gonna have a good time. Like, right, right, right. that's why they used to use me for that shit so much. Cause <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna shoot half court shots with them. We doing yeah. all that. We finna have a good ass time. I already know. But uh, you, you start to think about it like, damn, like why, like why this don't happen in these neighborhoods that we're all from? Like why is it not, like why are we, or at least why are we not seeing more of it? You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and you gotta push that narrative. Like, yep, you gotta push it. I wish that I would have won a championship and found a mic and just been like, and what we doing for the hood? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like but bro, now that we won, we're like what we finna do for the hood? Yeah, like, it's true, they need it. Real talk though, it's, it's, it's dope that you was in that because I, I definitely didn't feel that way. When I first did, I just felt like I wanted to faint, bro. When we won, yeah, I'm like, bro, that's you got one or two? One. Yeah, one? One, okay. yeah, they ain't, Bron, them ain't come get me for the Lakers. They ain't come, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, yeah him, and Swish, him and Swish ain't come get me, man. They just, you know what I'm saying, they <laughs> rode off in the car. <laughs> rode off in the car. Um, I'm happy for them though. They did it. That yeah, definitely. Was, people was talking about that bubble victory and saying that it wasn't. But she, you, you a guy that who, so you know that bubble victory might have been a harder championship. That's the, that's the toughest. You think so, bro? That's, that's the toughest pitcher. You everybody chilling. We've been chilling for two months, thinking we done for the year. Everybody got time to get out of shape, and they had an older team. Yeah, that's the toughest one. Boy, they was hooping that whole time, stayed in shape, kept their body right. Think about who they, they didn't have, you, you got to square off with Jimmy Nim. Jimmy Nim running through, Boston running them, uh, running through. It was Denver, Denver, LA. And the pandemic. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. And the whole pandemic. Like you had to deal with that, was, mask, all that. And they won, stayed in shape through that whole I thing. I wish that was I me. I looked was at tough. them on the floor. I looked at that one pitch. I think LeBron, it was like the confetti. But yeah. no fans. It's crazy. That's but that's to that me. Was, that, that was to that me was would crazy, affect right? me positively though, wouldn't it? What? Like with no fans, no real distraction. Nah, it's like that's like. You yeah, that's why I told people bubble. that's why it was gonna be scary. LeBron James in a bubble where he can like communicate with everybody. Like, right? You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. No, that's the worst nightmare. Nothing. Like picture <laughs> KG playing in the bubble, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you can hear all that communication, like you'll never feel like oh, you that's should. True. I would never want to set a ball screen. KG gonna yell out y'all whole play that you can hear everything like playing and practice with some, yeah, playing and practice with she or like somebody yeah. like him that's like once they know what y'all doing and y'all got to keep trying to execute, and he just gonna bully the whole play now and he gonna yell out what he doing so that they could all cheat it too. It's like bro, we was, yeah, unless we all vets, like yeah. we gonna lose, bro. Like that's why I'm looking at the the the, the last four this year. And seeing that repeat, I'm like, that's a test to just all of them taking care of themselves, bro. Same, it's the same fall, huh? Yeah. That's incredible. That's crazy. Yeah. That's why I was like, that was the toughest, that was the toughest championship. Like I, I initially thought about it like they finna steal one. Yeah. And then I thought about it like, damn, bro, they stayed healthy after taking off two months. Two months, like at least a month, they couldn't talk to each other like it was like the whole world shut down. Yeah. It was like, we can't even practice. But that's that's where I feel like it kind of should have been a little easier. Cause it wasn't like you can, you know, like you could just stay home and be out of shape. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it was like, if you already in it, like which most, most of y'all are already in that locked in mindset. It's mm-hmm. like, you would have had to just really relax and unpack. But versus... you gotta think about it. Some people could have had the choice not to go into the bubble. Real so talk. they knew that people mentally it was, was like, checked out. Oh shit, you, you didn't have to go. I so thought you that pandemic go. was real. They like you know this is, they I like for the safety for the safety of your family, if you don't want to chance it, like yeah. they, everybody had the disc a lot of people yeah. didn't go. Yeah, a lot of people didn't go in the bubble. It was like actual Oh like, for real. So it was like yeah, you had what? to make a conscious decision that I'm gonna go into this bubble yeah. for however long 
And can't leave. And chance it. That's, that that's they could, You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. stay away from my family. Don't, you know what I'm saying? There's all type of shit going on. I would have had a good time, but it would have been tough. A good you know, time? If, yeah, like you're balling in the, you know. Hell no. I balling in the time. bubble? You're literally living I feel at like, Disney I wouldn't World. Have been able to win. I wouldn't have been able to win and just see confetti and no fans. I'd that's what I'm saying. Sick. Like, that would affect me I'd negatively. I'd have been sick. Yeah, I'd have been <laughs> sick. I, I, I ain't going to lie. Yeah, I'd have been mad. It felt good to, like, win. And we won on the road, so it was like they were stunned. Like, it felt good, like, it feel yeah. good. I ain't gonna lie, I'm one of them type of people I like to look at, the defeat. <laughs> <laughs> I either wanna see triumph or defeat. Man. Like, I, I love that, I love that moment in sports, dog. It's the only time, like, let, I'm so cool with, like, when I lose, when people get their moment, like, cause I know it's coming back around. Yeah. So it's like, I, I be cool with that, lo that loss, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. I ain't no sore loser, I can say that. I ain't too sore loser. I don't like losing, cause I, I do love that moment in sports, though. It's gotta be somebody that win, and gotta be somebody that lose, man. It's the most beautiful shit. It's just whether you can take it or not. What, losing? Like, yeah. Yeah, losing's hard, right? It, it, Nobody it. like to, I mean, I, I first started losing in Chicago. I cannot deal with that. I never lost in my career. And we get Chicago 13 wins out of 80. Oh, we remember. Two games? Oh, yeah. Oh, we, yo, lived that. That. yeah that we lived that. That was brutal. We was with oh, you. We attended yeah, we a couple us, games. 300 yeah. levels. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we was with you. Right. You came a few games tonight? We were still yeah. with you. That's crazy. That's crazy. Our pops had a, uh, a client who had season tickets. They was like in the nosebleed, so he would give them to them sometimes. Like, That's crazy. Yeah, we Jump in the shit. building. We was in that bitch. <laughs> Boy, we was with y'all, man. Yeah. We was in that bitch with Ben, Kirk. We was in there. Mm -hmm. Man, that was brutal. I was drinking every day. I could not handle it. We know. <laughs> we see you lead the Lakers, though. <laughs> you remember we see them? <laughs> we see my dog lead the Lakers, though, after the game. <laughs> you don't remember that? No. Right. I was probably no. hurt, because I was probably hurt. Salt. Like, how could he? <laughs> yeah, like, how could he? <laughs> uh, they told, they was like, yeah, that was him. That they was like, yeah, that was him. That was him. It was right across the street yeah, from the arena. The yeah, you what's what what's with that? What? Like, did you want to detach so badly? Well, I, I would, you you would think that you know if you have a bad game, say you're losing a bunch of games mm -hmm. like we did, mm -hmm. and you just stress because there's nothing you could do, you know, cause these NBA players <laughs> right, you right. can't win. So you know, then you just say, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the club, you know what I mean, and just chill out, have some drinks, and that was that makes it worse. But I thought <laughs> like you know. Cause, Drinking is a depressant. I'm thinking you, listen, I'm thinking you was gonna make a point and bring it to the positive. You say, and that make it worse. Yeah, that make it worse, that <laughs> make it worse. If you just drink every day, cause you upset yeah. about something, then that's gonna like make it, it's gonna compound. It's crazy, I never I never could do that. I always try to understand how people could drink and then the next day play. Like That's what, right. Like it hurt, like it hurt my body. Like I, if I drank and then, I would go and I play and I feel it like especially like two three days later like yeah. I would feel it and yeah. I'd be like bro I'm cool. Like, I you don't. never got like that? I did. Oh, I stopped. Yeah? I stopped drinking it's when I was 24. Guys. They get uh, yeah. You from start 24 feeling. to 30, I was like the knee problems come. You definitely gonna be yeah. like leave that alcohol. Alone. I'm cool. Yeah, the knee. I'm cool. Yeah, you feel it in the morning. You shit. Like man, I don't feel, feel like it bubbles. was the alcohol. Yeah, it felt like bubbles. Is Wait, in the knees. what? Yeah, yeah, the alcohol, man. The alcohol you tear drink? your body up, yeah, man. Yeah, boy. But I ain't no mess with your knee. Hell, I thought your it was knees. all like surgical. brain. No, it's surgical. It's surgery. Once you had the surgery, like inflammation would go. It's like instead oh. of you getting it anywhere else, it's like it just go right there. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for I don't sure. know what it is. It'll just load up. My knee would just get incredibly swollen. Yeah. That's why I used to be like, well, I'd be like, you gonna do it? Nope. As an you athlete. Be a cigar kid. Yo, oh, cool. No drinking. So it's like when you see him out, it's like, man, you paying for that. If I'm saying if you had a major injury, I'm saying that's when you first realize what alcohol does yeah, to your body. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like yeah. Before, that's true. like that's what I mean, though. It's when like I was 21, somebody. when I first came in the league, oh no, I get drunk, shorty, and come give you 25 the next day. I might be queasy a little bit, but I don't feel it like that. I felt like a superhero. Like I could still come windmill hungover. Like I don't right, care. Right, right, right. Like I'm still like, you know what I'm saying? Like how I am is just how I am. Like I could just do it. But once I had the knee surgery, if I got drunk, then the next day, like I could feel that in my knee. Like mm. I better get there two hours early yeah. and get in the cold tub and like make sure my knee feel good, then start my Weightlifting, then do it like for real. You I had start point, realizing it. I had a point in time where I wasn't even drinking alcohol in the league. Yeah, wasn't even for years. What like, was your best routine? Cause we got a lot of young young listeners that yeah. are like working on everything. What's your yeah. What was your best routine in the league? My best routine when I wasn't drinking, uh, <laughs> and then also um, that was like from twenty 
four to thirty. Mm-hmm. Cool. You know what I mean? Actually, not, actually went beyond that a little bit too, a little, little beyond that. But then um, I was working out like four times a day. Yeah. Uh, I would work out in the summertime like nine. My my week was nine days, so I would go four times a day, nine Wait. days. Then take my then take my rest. Mm. Time out. You. S- <laughs> His week is nine days. <laughs> you know, week is around, nine. around our test week is nine <laughs> days. The rest of the world is seven. <laughs> Bro, what you mean, man? Nine he, days, don't take no rest. Yeah. No oh, rest. you would go nine days, then a break. Then rest. He thought you was really walking around. No, nah, I'm just nine like, I was just, I was trying to make sense. That's when of I was it. in really tip top shape. <laughs> right. I was so you'll go nine days shape. straight, 10th day, you get a, a day off. Day one day off, and I'll do that for like four weeks, like you know nine days, Shit. and then then I would go back to regular. I used to practice with a weight call vest. Them bitches a thirty six. I used to call, I used to practice in the end with a weight vest, like forty pound weight vest. Go through the whole practice, everything. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> just, yeah, whole, whole hey, weight dog. vest. How much weight? All right, man. 40, I'm a, listen. I'm gonna just tell y'all as, as a guy that played in the league, man. <laughs> If somebody was playing <laughs> with a weight vest, first off, getting off, off. <laughs> yeah, but how'd you do? Off. I was getting off. How'd you do? Like I, I know you shot job, it bad. Right? I know you <laughs> shot it bad. I play, no, I play well. You shot it off. I play well. Me. You tell me you shot it yeah, bad. I, I mean, Carlisle was up in the building. Uh, my friends, <laughs> in there. my they, friends, they, <laughs> my friends, my, my friends is playing. <laughs> I, I did well. I did well in the weight vest. Very well in the weight vest. What? Yeah. Oh, how? Yeah. Pushing it. You know, uh, the crazy. weight vest. No, I don't know how Drink to go. Times. No, no, yes. Yeah, but when I was in the end, I actually, yeah. But you know, because sometimes I wanted. I was working so hard in the summertime when training camp would come. Yeah. I came back like, you gotta think about it. I came from average 18 to 24. That's how much better I got in one summer. So wearing the wearing the weight vest. Well, I'm talking about <laughs> just I was wearing the weight vest. No, I'm saying too. you felt like the weight vest helped you. Well, I felt like sometimes in practice I wasn't getting a full challenge. So yeah, clearly I mean, there's some Michael Jordan it, shit. Yeah, like hey, man. Yeah, I need a full, I need a bigger yeah, you really yeah. going at whoever your reserve was. No, no, you no, going yeah. at him. I ain't gonna lie to you. I wish the fuck Mellow would get on the podcast and be like, yeah, I was working out in the fucking weight vest, though you wasn't, then I was cooking you. Uh, there ain't nobody finna be in a weight vest cooking me, bro. It wasn't That's, necessarily to go at anybody that was in practice. It was more insane, to say like, I don't practice. Bro. But, <laughs> but I'm saying, vest. I'm saying, but to play with that, like, bro, a weight vest, if you wear a weight vest for a set, <laughs> To do your your whatever your weightlifting instructor told I you to do, do a weight vest at the podcast. You go after that three minutes. You gonna want to <laughs> take it off. It's actually not healthy. I wouldn't advise anybody to do it. <laughs> That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Right. It's bad on your knees. Yeah, you yeah, jumping exactly. yeah, like yeah. I'm like, bro, yeah, what yeah. is going on actually, with you? Don't don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's just something because you're that's, a, that's an ACL waiting to happen. Yeah, <laughs> that's the answer that's we a, really yeah, want. That's ACL waiting. To, I mean, you know, <coughs> yeah, I wouldn't try it because you just never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, hey, you man. Never know. <laughs> Nobody ever came up to you. No other coach was just like, nah. they would, they, but they would leave me alone because they know like I was coming to work. <laughs> <laughs> so they would just say, okay, man, you want to take the weight vest off? No, nah, I don't want to take it off. <laughs> and they was like, okay. Yeah, you know, just let me, let me, let me practice. Yeah, I'd, have been on the, I'd have been on the flow if you did that with the Knicks, dog. Yeah, I uh, you know, and was getting off. Cry laugh. We wouldn't have played. We wouldn't have practiced with him. We'd have laughed at him. We'd have laughed at him too. I was always out. trying to get that edge, man. I was oh, trying, bro, trying to get but that especially edge. if you yeah, would have been no, cooking somebody, honestly. you go cook somebody. That's with what. It that's what would get me. That's like, why not I said the I know you shot it because if you was trying to shoot and something is pulling, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's it's not like it's worn. It's not gonna right. be worn comfortably. Like nah, it's, nah, it's moving. The only way to get it, yeah, the only oh, it is one of those. The only way, but the only way to get it to not move is for him to make it so tight. Yeah, now you. Can't yeah. breathe while you're trying to hoop. <laughs> so I'm like, he would have had to have it bouncing. That's why I'm like, bro, how? I did it a couple. I would say like maybe ten times oh <laughs> practice. <laughs> maybe ten times in practice. Man, what the full <laughs> practice? <laughs> Forty pounds up. Man, who was on your team? I that gotta team. get whoever they are, man. Whoever was on his right, team, where he did the, yeah, whoever was receipt. on the team, <laughs> fuck the receipts, nigga. You coming on the podcast and come on the podcast and explain what y'all did when this man was playing with a fucking weight vest. Get, get Carlisle on your podcast. He oh, probably bro. remember, maybe. Yeah, come on here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If I'm saying he'll probably. <laughs> right. I don't know what he does. <laughs> you know, if I'm saying he'll probably. He know, bro. Oh, yeah. But now I was always oh. trying to get that edge, that edge, man. Yeah. You know, just to like, I didn't come in the league like thinking, knowing I was gonna be all star. I had to be like, get that inch, yeah, get that inch, you know. For real, I'm gonna get on you. I only did it one time too. That's the crazy thing. One time all star, 
Yeah. All that work to be an all-star one time. It's not the same no more either. It's not the yeah. same. They don't even like pick you based on the same things no more, I don't think. Yeah, it is. I like the league now. It is a little different though. Yeah, it's yeah. way different. It's way right? different, yeah. You, gotta, you had to be a dog to get an all-star call. Yeah. Back oh, in the day, back yeah, 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 like the and he was a defensive player too, so it wasn't easy. But it, it was shit. It yeah. was just like shit. We gonna we gonna watch a good All Star game. Like, oh hell yeah! You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. that's what I mean. Like now it's just because they were actually. How played, do you feel about man. the All Star games yeah. now? I just I think they should have two, one where the stars and one where they gonna play. Like you should have two games, and then the game before that, let that be who wanna really play, right? And then. Let them play. And then you have the game with, you know, your captain's pick. That game's going to fizzle out at the end. It should be two, two games? Yeah, two games. Like, people who really want to play. Like, I want to see a good good game. you saying, like, on within the All-Stars? Same players? Or? I mean, it could be if they want to. If somebody want to play in the game that's going to be competitive. Or are you saying, like, you'll let the rest of the NBA get, get some? Or let somebody else, let some other players get, you know, like, two, two games. Real tough. You got your main All-Stars. We just giving y'all group. ideas, man. Yeah, you know, just throwing stuff just out throwing there. Out That's there. all. Shump ass, you know. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we just we just throwing it out there for y'all, keeping y'all brains jogging because the whole like two hundred points is too. It's crazy. Yeah, I, that's a lot. I, I swear for God, I was like, bro, I I just don't real like I can't let nobody do that to me. Two hundred points. It just looking. It looks too much. Even I when I see the one sixties and the. I'm like, bro, well, that's what he means. He like, it's not, Bro, when people score 120, I used to be distraught. Like, oh my God, they just won Yeah, 120 is a lot. Coach took us out and just let us just, like we could have kept it to 104. Yeah. Damn, you took us all out. They dogged us out, Joe, 120. Bro, they looking up now and seeing 168. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's. Everybody got 30. Oh, ugh. It's a different game. Everybody yeah, can, yeah, 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 you can it's just. Way different. Um, what? Ugh. Hey, and no, no fouls, no. The playoffs oh, no, is a little fine. rough. Yesterday was. Uh, oh no, the, the playoffs has been great. Playoffs been rough, yeah. Oh, no, this has been great. You knew Miami was gonna do that. They always, every year, Miami's gonna stay. I didn't think that. Miami was gonna do this. I ain't gonna lie. No, my it's matchups though. It's, oh no, that's true. But they beat Boston. That was their issue. That was yeah. the bad matchup for them. They beat Boston. Jimmy figured it out. What do you think about Jimmy? Wild. Jimmy's Jimmy's kind of. I think he put a tremendous amount of pressure on Jason Tatum <laughs> and uh, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown to do what? Pick mm. who it's gonna be. Like who gonna stay? No. Who gonna basically? Who gonna defend them? Yeah. Oh. Who's gonna deal with me? Is it gonna be you or you? But that's what that comes down to, correct? Yeah, he's a dog. Like though. at the end of the game. Like, if y'all got y'all guy, who's stopping the guy? Like, if you stop the guy and you get the ball, now it's a different ball game. Your team got a different confidence. And I feel like he played chicken with them and they couldn't pick. So they was going back and forth at times, not oh, knowing. they didn't need to. Yeah, but no, not even that. They just, they were trying to, they're trying to play correct, the right way, the right way I feel like, uh, right, Boston. Right. Like, I feel like, but in that, in that time, it's got, somebody's got to say, nah, I'm the guy. Come, yeah, yeah I'm the be guy. selfish. Yeah, not even, yeah. That's being selfish. In a way you it have is, to be. Yeah. You played against Jimmy? Yeah. And you, he's, he was But you know, Jimmy and like Jimmy, that? same draft class. Was he Was he always like that? Yeah. Even in high school and college? Coming out of college, he was. Yeah, he was. Me and Jimmy like got into it college. probably every day really? working out in the summer in Sarasota. Me and Dang. Jimmy was probably the most exciting shit to watch. Dang, I wish I could have been there. Like, yeah, we was. And we was both like, they was like, oh, we we don't know when they'll get drafted. Like yeah. they might be second round, late, whatever. We right. went through our workouts. Everybody was like, no, they first round. First both round us. Both of them first round us. Like, but we just, Jimmy's always been uh, one, a student of it. Mm. But I think, especially in these finals, like when, when he had to do the, uh, uh, um, to get prepared for, like, you know, Jimmy throughout the season, it don't even look like he's yeah, gonna be like that. It don't, I mean, he he played well, yeah, he but does. But he's learned the game now, where it's like, he don't have to, he knows what turning it on means. It's like, bro. Yeah, he got pace. Yeah, he got he's gonna pace. pick the spots of like, okay, for from six minutes till two minutes, mm -hmm. I gotta do this and carry it, and we should be shooting free throws by two minutes. And he don't make no mistakes. 
Nah, he's he's but he, he playing with the ball in front. He he attacking the rim saying, at all times. Not making no mistake. They creating space for people. I like the way they playing. They just dealing with again. They now you dealing with a a, a matchup Ooh. that's just it's rough. Are oh, you talking about uh, Denver? Denver? They just a rough matchup. Like yeah. that's it's a game of matchups. Like you might be the best team, and it's just you just don't match up well. Like I don't see them match. Like I saw Bam. You think was, that's how it was with L. A. and Denver? What uh, that they just didn't match, didn't up, match well? up well? Yeah. That's what I felt like. Cause as bad as that went, I felt like LA still They had some close games. Yeah, like LA games. still had a leg in that. It just never happened the way they wanted it to. Yeah. It, that, it, it was tough. They shot the ball extremely well. Like when you when it's not yeah. going your way and then the, the other team shoots it like that, it's crazy. Yeah, you got a guy putting it back over here. <laughs> it's tough. Step back it's three. It's unorthodox. Yeah, it's like I was watching one game. I'm like, this is impossible. Real talk. Cole, Cole well hitting something. Oh then yeah. And you have Porter yeah. and the crazy shots. Real talk. Going, everything going in. So yeah, these guys. As you watch this stuff now, you ever think about getting into coaching? Oh yeah, I, I want to be a head coach for the show. You want to be a head coach? I've been wanting to be a head coach for a long time. Yeah, weren't you coaching show. with um the uh I coached the Lakers. Now. Play, play I, I, I did I did coach with the Lakers. Um I never knew you wanted but to be yeah, a head coach. Head coach is a different headache. It's not a headache. I, I mean, it's you, a headache. I, you know what I'm saying? Player development. You know what I mean? Like, I do player development. I thought about it now. Yeah, I I'm think trying. I could do player development. I could be Phil. Phil Handy. Shout out my boy yeah, Phil. Yeah, shout out to Phil. I could be <laughs> Uncle Phil. Phil going to be a head coach one day, maybe. That's what it looked like. He lo- I think he loved the development too much, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, I swear, though. No, I ain't never seen him with a enough. gym rat. He is a gym rat, bro. Yeah, but yeah, I worked out with him a couple times when I was with the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. You like you like his workouts? Yeah, it was good. I yeah. remember doing the workouts in the morning, mm-hmm. then going working out with Darvin Ham Work. after Phil, Real talk. doing some stuff, and uh, now nah, it was great. But I coach Cal State now. I coach the girls. I've been Valentine coaching for four years. Work. Yeah, Division Work. Two girls. We went to the tournament this year. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of kind of like you know. So how, how do you like that? Like transitioning from uh, men's to girls basketball now. I like coaching girls. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, because um, it's, they're not just dunking on anyone, right? So you got to do it's way more nah, teaching. I just seen a, some white girl. Oh yeah, 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 that's yeah. True. in that's high true. school, a sophomore white girl. That boy, she dunking. She, she, she's dunking, and she, she, she went yeah, up she's there. Not, she I know, I know what you mean. Though. Like that's not every other. <laughs> it's play not every other player. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like let's. It's getting yeah, pretty no, regular yeah, though. Yeah, it's getting that's, regular. It's, it's getting kind of regular now. Like they, they, they starting to do exactly. They been dunking on each other. Yeah, got this little white girl. No, I seen on the break. But I'm saying, I'm saying, no, I'm saying like dunking on each other, like somebody. He's clearly up here to block it, and you went over. Oh, like yeah, anyway. yeah. yeah. They that's my that. thing. They're about that's to get next. on that. They're that's about next. to get on that for that's next. sure. That's next. With the girl, with the big girl, with, with Brittany, with the girl you're talking yeah. about. I forget her, what's her name. I forget her name. Uh, yeah, I could. I she be dunking back. I apologize, yeah. but I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah I seen it. She's still in high that. school. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. She going to Duke, I think. Hey, she gonna be. She gonna be one of the ones. That, one of them ones. Yeah. One of them ones, because she, she's not at a height that looks, like Brittany Griner still got a height that make you be like, mm-hmm. of course she should be able to. like. But this girl, if she walked past me, I, first what thing is, is she, not six, what three? I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. like you're not gonna think, yeah, she could dunk. That's she's what I athletic. Love, like. I love mm-hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. You got any athletic girls over there? Who you got? Who you we, got? We do that have we some, need to keep our eye on, man. One of our most athletic is Lily, Lily Bugs. Lily Bugs. Um, Nicole. That's a raw Flanner. ass name. I was yeah, just about to say that. That's some raw as hell. Shout out to your name, man. All Lily American. Bugs is crazy. Sound like a hitman. Oh, yeah. bro. Lily <laughs> Bugs. Put that shit back. Crazy. Lily Bugs coming yeah, back. I don't want to be back. Lily Bugs sound like she riding the back seat always. Yeah, ain't no fool. She's a serious player, too. You'll like her. That's fire. You don't respect her. Word. Yeah, I love coaching them. Dang, so you ch- coaching over there. What you running? What system you running? Man, I got a, I got you a got system, You got like a favorite man. coach you run under or you got your own shit? Well, I, I'm an associate kind of head coach for Coach Torino Johnson's the head coach. Copy. So, but he, he he gave me a lot of freedom, you know, to work. So I could put into different defensive schemes. Yeah. You know, he let me, he let me put in offensive schemes. Straight. You know, I, mean, I, work, out, I work out with the girls, 6 a.m. Yeah. I practice at 6 a.m. practice. 5.45 a.m. practice. <laughs> Shout out to y'all. Every day. <laughs> Shout out to y'all. Yeah, man, me. every day. 5.45 is crazy. Yeah, 5.45. Yeah, that that's means you up at four. No. Nah. Uh, Shout out to Tall Paul. He was, you, Tall Paul five never five. had us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, was six a. we did 6 a.m. track, but that was like, we had two weeks or three weeks of that, and that's it. Like, we graduate out of that. Like That's like hell, hell month or whatever to get in shape. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He going crazy. I just wanted you to know. He <laughs> going <crazy. laughs> That's sick. Six a.m. Like, no, oh, that's, that's year, year round. That, that wasn't my choice. Though. That's the head coach's choice. Oh yeah, yeah. But it was because of um, school and. No, no, no. It's dope. Team, I'm only man. teasing. I'm only teasing. First off, I'm yeah, only that's, teasing. That's they got to schedule wild. it. Yeah, that's still wild. So you head. So you 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 coaching now. Yeah. The goal is to be head coach yeah. in the NBA. The, that, that's definitely the first goal. The dream. Mm. Yeah. Got you. Definitely the first goal. But I it's not a thing where I'm not like, I don't go out looking for jobs. If I, if I see, if I, I'm on ESPN, if mm-hmm. I see somebody lost their job, I'll just say, I call my agents, say, hey, go, Run into go try to real. get that one real quick. Real and talk. then uh, they say no, normally they say no, and I say, okay, <laughs> let's go back, let's go back Keep to business. What I'm doing. <laughs> let's go back to business. All right, we talking business. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me about the app, x uh, Oh yeah, man, x First X came a long way, man. Um, the app started out LA, just t- helping people find games. And I wanted it to be a tech company, but we were trying to figure out, find our footing. Then um, LA Times came in and worked, worked, worked with us a little bit. And now we're building it into more of a tech company. I can't disclose a lot on it right now, but you know, your boy Chris Cope is a partner with me on, the, yeah. on that. Boy, yeah. Al, Jermaine, Stack, yeah, Stack Jack. I like the idea behind it. Yeah, and it's, it's turning into something different. But one of my goals is to send players around the world to play basketball. Awesome. So, you know, because I never got a chance to play in the Olympics because I was in trouble. 2004, <laughs> I get suspended the, the, trouble. the year of the Olympics. So I missed that one, which I didn't feel I should be because I feel like the Olympics has nothing to do with the, the league, you know? So, Straight up. But, a, but it does, obviously. But you know, that was a long time ago, so I missed that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was a long time ago. <laughs> I missed that one. Then in 2008, I, was, I thought I should have had a chance to try out, but they didn't even let me try out. Mm-hmm. I had to call them. I'm like, so I'm waiting for like, you know, a try. I'm still playing well. And I see them pick the first team. I said, all right. They picked that little second team. You know, your second team get a chance to play. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm going to go on that team. I'm just going to go take somebody's spot. Right? So I didn't get the call. So I called up the office, leave a voicemail. Nobody hit me back. So then, I said, <laughs> so then I said, damn, 2012. I'm getting older now. That's 2012. Right. So I said, okay. I call again. And then I, said, I haven't, haven't gotten a response. So my way of you know, fulfilling that, because there's no way I should not have been an Olympian. There's no way in the world, right. you know, third team all NBA player, when the, when the game is dropping, defense player, yeah, you're not, you're not an Olympian, or even a tryout. Right. I was for sure gonna take somebody's spot. But um, <laughs> <laughs> in my prime, somebody, you know what I mean? But then, so now it's like, okay, I wanna, I wanna fulfill that. Mm. So this is the way to fulfill it, doing like, you know, you know sports platforms for other people. Yeah, Cause then yeah I'm that's gonna get, dope. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be fulfilled. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I, most of the most of the traveling I've done in my life stem from basketball. Yeah. I was probably the most cultured out of all of us when coming out of high school and shit. Culture people don't usually say I was probably <laughs> the most cultured. Well, you're anybody. as confident as Iman. He's such creative. He, I'm just saying, dude, I probably- don't help, daddy, him. Out don't of my help daddy him. sons. Don't out help of, him. Out of my daddy's sons, I probably could eat at the most restaurants. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you what does that, that even mean? Baby, I, X what is that? X. No, what does that X mean? X and X, that it could take you places. You see what I'm saying? X and X. But how does that get you into a restaurant? Like, how would that get you into a restaurant? Because basketball gets you to Italy through X and X. Now we're talking about a country. No, that's what he said. You globally, just said restaurant. Like, globally take I can get in any restaurant I want. Yeah, but I'm saying the game got to take you to It don't restaurant. have to take me to the restaurant. Why you got to be in Italy? Because I could drive. I could take, I could take a plane to Italy. You never going to go. What? But if you play never basketball, yeah, it's true. if you play basketball, <laughs> I mean, you might go, but you know, <laughs> there's tons of people who go. <laughs> yeah, you gonna go after you win a championship in basketball? You gonna no. go to Italy on your own? Huh? Where well, you not gonna go to Italy? Why would you say that? How many times you been to Italy? But what? <laughs> no, we're not talking how many times I've been to Italy. We talking about hey, if I want to go example. to Italy. Look, look, I got one for you. How many times you been to Israel? What? Why you with? It was a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want to go. That's what I'm saying. I didn't want to go. Culture. That don't have nothing like to do with said, culture. Like I said, I'm probably the most cultured. What'd you learn? Days, wait, uh, wait, wait. Since you culture, what'd you learn in Italy? Oh, they got a wall that they put their prayers in. That's awesome. What is it called? The Great Wall. Or the prayer. Or, no. The break. Culture. The Great Culture. <laughs> there we the go. Culture. Wall. The prayer wall. It's simple. No, you it's, were there. It's, it's I was there with you. It's called a prayer wall. 
No, we call it the prayer wall. That's like in reference, but it's got an actual, they have an actual. You in Italy? What's your culture? No, 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 no this, this is, is Israel. Israel. Oh, Israel. See, mm. we've, this is too much. See, that's what you see what I'm saying? Hey, that's why we need much. the app, bro. So yeah, you can yeah, hook up the pickup game. I'm saying, connect, connect. Real talk, connect. connect all the dots, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man, connect. Come on, man, do your question. <laughs> all right, man. What you got. We like to ask all our guests, like, in the current moment, what are you working on personally? Right, especially after you just gave us all that. What are you evolving (laughs) on now as like this grown man? I think, man, right now, just um, I've been. Well, I started doing a lot of tech, right? You know, when I when I retired, actually, when I was in when I was playing in the league, I was still into it. I was like, I want to start getting into this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was trying to make sure that I had my time to myself because I knew what I was going to get into. When I found out the information. I said, oh wow, this is about to be a lot of work. So I went back to school for coding, went back to school for business analytics, digital analytics. I went to two two colleges when I retired. I was in Concordia for a little bit on Saturdays. I went to UCLA extension program. Then I did Google Analytics. I did um I did uh then I worked AWS, get a bunch of bunch of development stuff, you know, um, learned about data science and different things. It all it all applies to athletes. It all applies to what we can, what we can sell. That's statistical, right? It's all- stats, stats, yeah. um, data analytics. A little bit different. You just use technology, bring together, bring together other um, sources, you know, through API calls and different things like that. But, um, but that's been taking up a bulk of my time. And then, you know, my first major in college was architecture. So, and and also I was going to minor in math at one point before I went oh. to the league. So I knew like I had that going for me. And then once I once I re- realized I wasn't gonna be a head coach right away, so I said I'm just gonna go full time into you know into tech entrepreneurship, you know creating architecture to hold up our opportunities as athletes, you know because we got so many opportunities, but sometimes it can get overwhelming. It's like too many, mm-hmm. you know. So how, how do you say it's not overwhelming? How do you take advantage of that? So you take your time, sit back, kind of create a system that can hold up all these op- opportunities, you know. So that's been honestly that's been a bulk of my time, and then just trying to make time for the family and stuff. So it's a lot of, a lot of times just home or working on tech. Um, basketball got a lot of, practice. And yeah, then in, in, the, um, in the winter times or basketball season, I'm up in the morning. I'm, I'm done by 8.30 so that I can get on my day. Yeah. You know, so I can still stay around the game. I, I love the game, you know, and that gave me a reason to be around the game, but it's probably, it, definitely a lot of basketball, but from a different perspective. Yeah. You know, then when we play a different perspective. And I'm yeah. sure that routine. Huh? I said, I'm sure that routine keep you in check. I love the routine. Yeah. yeah. I routines, love the routine. Routines is always the best. Though. I ain't have a full Especially one. when you find the one that works. Like, usually you participate in one that doesn't work. That can give you a fucked up perception of it. But, like, if you find one that works or that, like, like it's making them happy. I just I'm got sure into golf, too. It. I love golf right now. I just got into golf the last 18 months. You know, and. Yeah. So I'm like all over golf right now. What, what is it? Is it the patient aspect? Is it, it's really, you don't know somebody told me? It's so challenging to see something this big and you can't hit it to go exactly where you want it to go. That's what she said. Yeah, it's probably, that's probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Lord, that's crazy. But for real though, he like pitcher trying to, you supposed to command this to go into that hole and you can't do it. He say, once you go up there and you make yourself look stupid one time, your competitive nature take over to yeah. where you like, I gotta get good. Yeah. And then yeah. you like, I gotta hit a hole in one, which could take a year, nigga. That's what's crazy. I heard that, that doesn't I heard that doesn't happen. Like I heard you get the competitive, you know, you get that spark and it then you wanna lock in, it. but yeah, it may never happen. Yeah, it may you never may happen. Which, that but they yeah. chase, and they'll chase it forever because now they <laughs> love the game because it's difficult. They I even love bringing other people. Like I've had people that suck at golf have me come play golf just to see if I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd wild. take two swings and be like, I'm uninterested. And yeah. they're like, but you're good. I'm bro, I'm not good. Like they're like, but you can hit it. <laughs> like we can't even. You, you, ever been to, you ever been to Top Golf? Oh yeah. Uh, like people be out there looking stupid. Like people be falling into yeah, the net. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to like they unrelated, throw, unrelated to anything. But you use my phone number for your Top Golf account. So when I go to Top Golf, I'm you <laughs> every time. <laughs> if y'all ever worked at Top Golf and you're like, yo, Iman Sharper's on the second level, it's probably not. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like people calling me. I always feel like when my face got to be involved in any type of identification. 
like when you put that number, like it's one thing for my name to pop up because people kind of just like think I gave a generic. But when my face pop up for some reason, I get nervous they're gonna call my phone. So give them my number so they can call my phone. I just feel like if <laughs> they would never do it again now. Like if I worked at somewhere and if I worked at Top Golf, he come in there <laughs> and. I'm like, yo, I got it, Ron. I got yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> I, I got his math though. Like, I'm gonna hit him. Like, I d- no, I, I dare you to hit him. And oh, then bro, if he co- like, no, but let's if he- call him and see if he'll come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got his number. What's up, okay? You know that happened before. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know I mean, well, I'm, I'm just saying. That, it. Oh, okay, okay. I'm assuming that not it didn't happen okay, to me, but I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah, that, that He's happened. Assuming oh, yeah, it happened to you. No, no, it happened to me. <laughs> oh, it happened to you? Yeah, it happened to me before. Somebody called me before. And kept calling? No, I just didn't, because I had to give my, in New York, you remember when they first started doing all this stuff where you didn't have to do the receipts no more, like they email it or they text mm-hmm. it to Oh yeah, yeah. When they first mm-hmm. did that, like I did that a couple of times. And then I think I had to like verify something else. And then I left a store and uh, the lady um, called me and was like, uh, I was the one at CVS or <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But trying it was just, to bag you. <laughs> it, I don't know what it was. It was just awkward. It was just like, no, she's like, you, this your number? Like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, I, yeah, I done already picked it up though. Like you looking for Iman? Like, yeah, this me. Like I'm already, yeah, this me. What you need? Like confirm this me, everything. Hey, lucky, I don't like, work at CVS. I'd have been like, this Iman? He'd be like, yes, this ain't him. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, before we let you go, it's anything you want to promote. Yeah, man, I'm bro. happy to be on the show. I ain't seen you in a minute, my man. Dog, one, that's what man. I'm saying, man. Good to see my dog. Fam- How many babies you got now? I got two. Two babies, two. man. That's I, got I, I see a, you on I there. got a seven year old and I got a two year old. That's inc- well, Congratulations, man. I'm so happy for you. I seen you. Cause we worked so we was working we was with the Knicks. That's what I said. So your son, babies. your son. You remember yeah, your son babies. was helping me when I was coming back from the one injury. Oh yeah, a little bit. He was yeah, chilling. Yeah. Your son came in. He was getting shots up, and then afterwards he was coming doing the contest for me. Cause I'm like, bro, shit, he tall as hell. He, nigga, he let him do it. <laughs> yeah. He like hell yeah. He love the game. He'll do it. Like he, man, they was over there. You don't remember that? Yeah, I do. Shit, yeah, yeah. He was coming up there, bulldog sitting there trying to be play defense on four. Let his son do it, man. What you talking about? He's a real athlete. Like. <laughs> That shit used to happen all the time. Like I seen a lot of the uh, former Nick players. Like remember Carmelo's son used to come. Yeah, he's nice. Uh, oh, he's nice. That's what it's crazy yeah. looking oh, at nice. all of them no, now. No, I'm telling you, Bronny. He's nice. Yeah, I used to look at him too. Oh, I used to just Bronny be like, and Bryce, like them when they was like <laughs> at our hip. They like really at our yeah. hip, like joking around, doing the dances. Nah, these like niggas is- they was wearing the uh, uh, Bryce was wearing the goggles and stuff. Like they was joking around yeah. after the game, like trying to Look, like yeah. yeah. It was like I remember Cayenne trying to barely like get it up there. Like who, who's oh, uh, Mello, uh, Mello son? Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. trying to throw it from here, trying to get it over us. He's you nice. Know what I'm saying now I'm looking at them now, just calm pace. How he got the jumper like his dad. <laughs> He oh, looked yeah. just in high like school. All of them do though. That's yeah. crazy. Bronny dunked just like his dad. Yeah, can't turn it. Probably up. don't jump as high, but he's he's he gonna be a tough one. You think he gonna be a point guard or a shooting guard? I don't know. He a better point guard. I think Bronny gonna be a point guard. He need to be. Yeah, I like him at the point he play guard. Play a lot. Like you know who he remind me of? Lonzo with a way better Shot. mechanics. Right. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. His mecha- yeah. Yeah. Of course. Like kind of like Lonzo. Of <laughs> course. He's, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, your daddy, I'm just you laughing. know who your daddy is. So it's like, bro. But it, it's Shit, like bro, Lonzo, right hand, you know left hand, hand pace. Yeah, uh, don't shoot. use too many dribbles. Yeah, can shoot, can give you any type of pass. Defense, see the floor, guard. Great defense. Want to compete? I'm there like, bro, he's really Lonzo Ball. At what Lonzo Ball? As far as like the mechanics that we wanted. Yeah, Bronny got him. Yeah, definitely. Like, that's what he remind me of when I 2. look 0. at two point five. No, not even. I just. The projection on him, like you know what I'm saying, like when you when you're trying to see a player and see what he would look like, I'm oh, like, bro, yeah. think about Alonzo Ball style, where it's like I could push pace, I could see everything, I'll get everybody involved, I don't have to score it, don't care to score if I don't have to. Like Bronny's literally that's just why gonna make I, the that's right that's play. What I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I like he that just about make him. the right play. He gonna put the foot on the gas. He gonna go. You come up here. You gonna make the pass. He not finna run. And it's wild because he knows everybody's watching. He's still not rushed. Yeah. Nah, he's not he rushing. Not I know. I'm calm. Like, yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love that film. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. Son hooping still? My one son stopped hooping when my Jerron stopped hooping and Ron's still trying to, he's still trying to get into the league. Still getting right? 
Yeah, he, yeah, he's getting, he's getting right. He's had a little surgery and still trying to get into the All league. All right, man, keep hooping. Sure. Keep hooping. We know how it go. Keep hooping. For keep sure. Hooping. As always, man, thank y'all for rocking with us on Iman Amongst Men. I'm Iman Shumpert. And I'm Ari Shumpert. Thanks to our guest, Meta Sandiford. Sandiford. Right. He, you know, stage text. name, Meta World Peace. Make it easy no, in your no, life. No, 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 no. no. I want to no, get this yeah. new one right. Sandiford. Sand I'm still going Sand about Sandiford. Yeah, send it for, but I'm still going by World Peace. Cause you just, do say send it for. It's just easy. It's just easier for you I'm know. just trying to get your wife name right. Yeah, yeah but yeah, no, but no for, no, no, no disrespect. No disrespect. Yeah, for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks to our, our guest, <laughs> Meta Sandifor, our test. One time for my dog. <laughs>